Hi everyone, it's Rebecca here. So today I'm going to do a video on unboxing fish basically and I'm sorry I haven't filmed videos in it. It's been about a week and a half but I've now started working seven days a week. I work three days a week like um, part time in the aquatic shop and then I work well the rest of the time at uni for studying a masters. So I have very little free time. Sometimes I, so I had this afternoon off so I've decided to film a video. It does mean that my videos won't be like at set times so it's a bit difficult um, from now on anyway and um, probably until the Christmas break. So unboxing and shipping fish. So firstly unboxing fish you kind of especially if shipping you want to do it as soon as possible you don't want to leave the fish in the box and just casually but I don't think many people do I'd also say don't molly cuddle your fish you don't need to think oh they'll really be like suffering it's so like difficult it's not that bad it's not stressful it shouldn't be stressful it's just so quick really and so I'm gonna go through all different things and I haven't got videos really of actual bagging up the fish but because I expect the store assistant will do it for you they would, won't usually let someone do it for you but I will probably do a video in the future of how to bag up the fish but here's sort of the basics so catfish, loaches, anything with spines always double bag they they will go through the bag any bag my um, barren sister's xanthellus is awful for it the don toaster it, um, hypertrophoid odontos and right by the gill opercula, so the ones that look a bit like whiskers almost on the lower cardae um, plecos. Um, they will, they are avertible, so they will move and they can, if the fish feels trapped in the corner, it will stick them out and they can burst the bag. So I would double bag. And when double bagging, I always bag it, so either knot or elastic band. If you're starting out, um, bag it yourself, always elastic band is easier than elastic band. And then I s turn the bag around and put the, um, so I've got one steer it in the way. Um, and then I um, put the next the bag in the other bag upside down. And then once it's through it, can some bags I find particularly sticky and I will put a net between the two bags to let out air so it doesn't create a vacuum which you can't compress air beyond a certain point anyway so then I will fold over the two um the sort of pointy bit the well the bags are usually triangular so I fold that over neatly and then tie up the second bag I will always tie it up because fish bags can move a bit so the net um, if the fish is longer, I'll place the bag on its side. Um, you don't have to place them um, sort of upwards. I'll never place the bag upside down because, yes, there's corners when it's the right way round, but there's even more creases when it's upside down and water can get trapped underneath it and it won't compress that well. And I've had a lot of catfish actually get trapped in those creases and it just makes it more stressful and then more likely to burst the bag. If you're worried about corners with fish, then I'd use elastic bands to tie them. You could even, in theory, sellotape them um, if you could get dry enough. And I wouldn't worry too much. I will always use hands for catfish, um, if possible. Some are venomous and then gloves or um, guiding them almost with a net. Um, I will always use hands for goldfish and with Siamese fighters I will try and get them more into the bag but I would like one of those of you get these like spoons they're a bit like um, is it ladles for soup and stuff to put the Siamese fighter in and then in the bag um, same with goldfish you can get use a bowl but I try not to use nets with certain fish um, and the other rules are corridors I would not place in a group of more than three because as I've said in my venomous catfish video they are venomous and they have the ability to for their venom 
well, the toxins they produce to become more of a poison. And if stressed enough, they can release the poison into the bag and it'll kill all the other fish in the bag. So it kind of reduces damages. You could bag them singly, and that is probably one of the best things to do. With catfish in general, sometimes it is a good idea to bag them individually. Anything sharp, any or any other sharp fish, uh, bagging them individually so they don't get well damage each other with their pectoral fins or say megalodorus. Their whole lot sort of lateral sides are quite sharp. And uh, along with that, I would always bag spe well different species apart. So only bag the same species together because, well, it's a stressful environment in the bag anyway. And I, it, ideally, I prefer to keep shoals of the same species so other species don't stress each other out. Pelagic fish, so that's not a great word, but um, I'm not... Well, basic pelagic fish, I wouldn't worry too much about corners. Um, depends on the catfish especially. Because some of those plegic ones can really do some damage. Um, so, yeah, generally catfish I would double bag, but tetra, raspora, I wouldn't worry as much. Generally, if you are panicky about bugs, bags bursting, double bag. Triple bagging isn't really needed um, unless you've got a very sharp fish. You can get thicker bags available to you. If possible, especially three hours or more, I will buy... Well, I have loads of poly boxes, so I will use them. I have poly boxes for each of the two suitcase sizes I've got. So I've got a small poly box and a big poly box. Um, and this is because I ha do travel with fish in my suitcase. Because um, you can't really carry travel stuff and the fish, like a suitcase and then the poly box. It doesn't really work. Um... And I wouldn't worry about turning the suitcase over so much. Just don't do it like banging it over. Just keep it like calm. And if you're going to turn over, turn over slowly. But it, I prefer to leave it standing up so the fish aren't moving around too much. So journey times. I would only start taking precautions at three hours or more. So the poly box. Oxygen I have never used, and I don't think I've seen stores really as much use it. Generally, the main issue is a lot of people have said they burst bags of oxygen. So they've been bagging for fish, and it only takes less than a second for a bag to just go pop. Uh, so, and generally, fish can survive longer journeys anyway. They are transported from different countries, and that is easily 12 hours or more. Readable bags, I've never seen them in the UK really, so I've never used them. But when they're in the poly box, it is quite a contained environment with not much oxygen, well, not extra much extra space for oxygen. So, on to unboxing fish, I think. Um, so, what I do is a lot of people. I don't know, loads of people have different techniques of this, but this is from working in a store and all sorts, so I'm pretty almost stressed but chilled. So I place everything in the bag, I float it, well I float it in the tank so I know where it's going, I'm thinking I put that there, so I float it there so I can see everything once I've got out the box so then I know where everything's going and I'm not unbagging fish and then putting it in. So as a rule no matter how good the store is, how good the breeder you think is, all of that, never mix water. I will never, ever, when you have a bag, roll it down, dip it in to get acclimatised water. First, it is stressful for the fish, but you don't know what's in the water. I would never even pour the bag water in. There could be pathogens of all kinds. The, the fish are coming from two different environments. Of course, quarantine is better and you could quarantine, but you're also adding more of the pathogens, in, well, the waterborne pathogens into your quarantine tank rather than just the ones attached to the fish. And also, you don't know the amount of ammonia actually in your bag, and that is increasing the amount of ammonia going into the tank. 
So there is no need to float the fish by rolling down the bag. And you're not going to be acclimatising them for that long. When um, floating them, I will remove the double bag. So I also don't drip acclimatise. I've never drip acclimatised fresh water, marine, whatever. I don't. Firstly, any cha change really is quite rapid. If anyone's had a power cut, well, if anyone's lost a heater, that and they've no, it well, their heater has switched off and it's been even twenty four hours. They, you might have noticed your fish go into shock, even after say sort of three four hours. So, drip acclimatization for half an hour, one hour, fifty minutes is still really stressful fish and can still shock them, even while floating temperature. The temperature will change, but your fish can probably cope with it given the, well, what they're used to in the wild of um, rainy seasons and stuff like that, but they can usually handle it. There are a few that will stress out more to temperature changes. So the longer the journey, generally the shorter I acclimatise the fish because They've been in that bag a long time. There's a lot of ammonia building up, I, which is the main reason. So I kind of weigh temperature acclimatisation against the ammonia in the bag. So 12 hours or more, the only acclimatisation I will do is just to get them in the tank and work out where everything's going. Other than that, I work, and for, well, with that, I'll just start to unroll them and empty them usually in the order that they are and place them in the tanks. I always put priority to the bags which are yellow stained because if anyone has worked in a fish store you will recognise the bags that are absolutely foul with like ammonia, um, like ammonia, nitrate, no just be ammonia but just like high waste so yeah so generally those bags first secondly i will always do corridors i don't want them in the bag long i don't want them stressing out and you can usually identify the corridors which are well embeminated or releasing the poison because they will lock their pectoral fins and lie on their side but it's best that i always like to do them first so that's my sort of priority and then after that sort of five minutes to 15 minutes depending on how long they've been in the bag so generally i tend to do about 10 minutes but yeah so there are fish that are a bit more sensitive to temperature but generally most aren't and unless you're really changing the perimeters, they will acclimatize physiologically sort of to it. I wouldn't dump, say, a molly in suddenly in brackish water because there's the osmoregularity that has to change. It is a massive physiological change, salinity, whereas temperature is just more from the bag. When they're in the bag, they're not going to have much of a physiological change to the different um, temperatures. So generally temperature indicates like, so if your enzyme and bacterial, bacteria can be influenced by temperature, but when they're in the bag, they're not in the bag long enough for that physiological change. And pH is difficult to say. Um, so I think that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Um, I'll try and do more videos. Um, it's just quite busy and yeah I've got uni um, and stuff like that and work and okay thank you for watching